I, I like the idea of talking about using uh, using these tools to generate lesson plans. Why wouldn't you? Um, so, right. but right. Uh, the reason you wouldn't is because they, they don't do it well. Uh, which goes back to that model of all the five steps in creating something. The fourth one there is the QA piece. It's the confirmation yeah. that it did what you needed it to do. If you don't know how to evaluate the quality of the thing you generated, uh, you're blocked from from success of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So if I'm a teacher who is not well trained in what a good lesson plan looks like, and I use generative AI to create one, uh, and I don't know whether it's a good one or not, I could just blindly follow it into the classroom and sink like a stone in that lesson I'm trying to teach <laughs> that day. These same kinds of evaluative skills are going to be really important. Uh, that's why, that's no, that's not the only reason. There are a whole bunch of reasons why, but that's one reason why the physical human expert teacher in the classroom isn't anywhere near going away. Generative AI is responsive. It's, it's logic-based. It's, it can only answer the questions it's asked. And it can't, it can't know when a real human child in a classroom, physical classroom, needs a, a particular thing, whether it's a social emotional response, whether it's a, you know, a cognitive kind of support, whatever it is, that teacher is going to be far more well tuned to provide that than any AI tool now or in the reasonable future. Um, <laughs> but uh, that teacher should would be very smart to use those tools to make them more efficient so that they can focus on the stuff that only they can do.